Stockpile Hobbies. Welcome back to Stockpile Hobbies, everyone. My name is Steve, and today I wanted to review all of the tools and items I use to maintain the slot cars and slot car tracks that I uh, operate here on the channel. I thought I'd give a rundown on everything that I use here. Um, I also have an automotive YouTube channel, so I already had a lot of these things handed to me. Uh, it's a big laundry list of items here to go through. I think it really depends on what you're focusing on, whether it's customizing or painting, uh, doing track repairs, or uh, performance upgrades. Uh, you might need some or all of the tools here. Before we get into the tools really quick, I just wanted to ask if this is your first time with the channel, please consider subscribing. If you're returning and you haven't subscribed and you love the content, obviously because you're coming back, please consider subscribing to the channel. Give a thumbs up. Let's dig into this. So let's start over here on this end and uh, work our way down through the list. So right off the bat, one of the first things you're going to need are extra tires. Uh, depending on what brand of uh, chassis you're running, you might have different size front tires or rear tires, both. Uh, here I'm showing the tires I use for my Tyco cars, the 440s. They got uh, pretty fat, wide rear tires. Uh, the Tyco cars, whether it's a narrow pan or a uh, wide pan, will have different size front tires as well. Uh, I buy these off eBay, but I'm sure there's other places you can find online to purchase tires. Uh, there's a bunch of people, they all seem to make their own. Uh, I looked into making my own too, but uh, it's, it's just more of a headache. It's a lot easier just to buy these already uh, made and cut. Uh, moving down the list here, you're going to need uh, shoes. The, the shoes will wear. The, the shoes need constant cleaning. Uh, you can use alcohol to rub the shoes to get the, the corrosion or the dirt off of them. Uh, you can also use a little bit of sandpaper or very lightly to get them nice and bright again as well. Um, on my slot car of the week, I found that cleaning the shoes makes a heck of a difference on the performance of the car. I use Scale Engineering Tools. Uh, I'll have a link to their uh, website in the description. Uh, these are awesome presses. You're able to remove wheels from axles, mount wheels on axles, remove the gears from axles, mount the gears on axles. Uh, there's different press for all the different types of brands, AFX, uh, Tyco, and others as well, T-Jets. Um, just get to check the website. Um, I work directly with I, Mark on the site. He is great. He's helped me out a lot. Uh, please check them out. If you, need, if you find yourself removing axles, doing a lot of repairs or customizing, this is a lifesaver. This just turns a... You, there's no way you're going to bend an axle or anything by using these tools. There are tons of different attachments too for the different size wheels the hubs and everything else uh, please check out scale engineering site and uh, the products they offer uh, i can't recommend them enough uh, also high speed bearing oil uh, this is an old can i've had since the 80s but they still make it uh, this is racer's edge high speed bearing oil the, the little label on the front finally came off this works wonders uh, when we do the cars we uh, put a little bit of oil at the top of the armature, uh, where the armature goes through the bearing there. Also on the back behind the pinion gear. And then uh, as well as doing the axles wherever the axle will touch the body on any of the cars. Uh, just need a, just a drop and then work it through. You can uh, swab some off with a Q-tip at the end. Uh, it gets rid of all the friction and the grit. And again, if you're looking for performance, you're going to need the, the high-speed bearing oil. Uh, some of the cars, like the AFX cars, uh, the auto wheel cars, as I found out, you should be oiling them every time you run them. Uh, I had one recently, not this car, but uh, it was squealing really bad. I think it was the, the Hellcat here, um, and I had an oiled uh, armature uh, post there. Uh, these these uh, really do need it. It's a really uh, tight uh, tension uh, hole there for the armature there, and so it should constantly be uh, lubricated, as well as the gears... Uh, on top of on the gear plate on top of the four gear cars or any of the uh, the pan style uh, chassis that all the world or AFX make. Next up is the dyno. Uh, this was the first thing I purchased before I started the YouTube channel actually. Uh, this thing is great. It lets you see how well a car is doing. Uh, I tend to run about nine volts on each side and then we just oop, and then we just click them on. So this dyno shows voltage on top and it shows uh, amperage on the bottom. And the idea is the lower the amperage, the lower the blue number, the faster the car should be around the track because it's not exerting as much effort to, to produce the energy to go down the track. And as you see here, in theory, the 0.25 amperage of the wiper should mean it's a faster car than the uh, X-Traction car over here running 0.28. 
One more tool I wanted to show off is the infamous laptop uh, battery charger. Uh, I use this to power all my racetracks. It allows me to do variable voltage from uh, 12 volts all the way up to 24. I'll have a link in the description to the video where I show how to wire these into the track. And that video also has the links to where you can buy these online. These are amazing. Do not use the wall warts from the old days. Get yourself one of these. You, you, you'll thank yourself for doing so. Super glue. Uh, I use Loctite Super Glue Gel. This stuff is great. This isn't like the stuff in the old days when you would squeeze a tube and it would just run everywhere. This comes out as a nice gel. Uh, you're able to put it onto things, rub it on, dab it, smear it. It works great. I've also used it as a body filler on the resin bodies. Uh, again, the Hellcat car, there was a clear hole here. Now it's just a little pin dot. If I can get that in the camera there. But this, this resin body had a hole in it. And while I waited for the seller to get back to me, I had an idea. Well, maybe I can just use some glue on and cover up the hole with the gel and it worked and actually in his response to me he also recommended using the gel so it's uh what they the it's what the people that make the cars actually use too when their molds don't quite come out great um this is great you, you squeeze the size tabs and you're able to control the flow of how much comes out too uh cutting things obviously scissors uh i also have a razor blade knife as well uh small pliers come in very handy and a small set of different uh, screwdrivers, Phillips and flatheads, for dealing with all the little screws on the cars. Uh, also, though, this is the big one. Uh, this is a dental kit. We got this off eBay. Uh, this is a lifesaver. It comes with all types of tools you're going to need to deal with the tiny objects that your fingers can't grab. It also has tons of different picks and pokes. Uh, I use these a lot when I make the, the custom rigs here uh, to remove all the chrome pieces before I paint them. The, the dental kit, the uh, the picks here, you're able to go behind the body and where, the, where they're glued, scrape off the glue, and then push the post back out to pop out all the different chrome pieces or whatever you're doing to customize things. Uh, these, these work great. Um, of all the things here, this is almost a must-have if uh, looking at the list of things here. If you're going to be doing anything, uh, just, just, just to have the tweezers is... Uh, a must-have, but everything else you get in the kit as well is, is great. Um, moving up in the difficulty level of usage, uh, a Dremel. I just had to buy a new Dremel. I lost mine. I don't know if I loaned it out or got misplaced. Uh, these things are notorious for either working great or dying quickly. Um, I When I bought this one, I was reading a lot of reviews, and it seemed to be the option is you buy a cheap one for $16, and you might have to buy four or five of them. Or you buy an expensive one for like $70 to $100. And eventually every couple of years you're going to be replacing it anyway. So you either buy, spend a lot and hopefully it will last you a long time. Or you're going to buy, uh, spend cheap money and get a bunch of these to make it last a long time. These take all types of different attachments for sanding, polishing, uh, routing, drilling. These, this is great. Uh, as you see here, th this kit came with the, the Dremel. The, the little tool kit, it also came with a, uh, a thin wand ex extension, so you're able to attach the other end to the Dremel and have this little little pen controller here to do the Dremeling instead of holding the, the bulky Dremel itself. Uh, they also sell just kits that I had before. It has all those things I mentioned and more, just more different options of things you're going to need. Uh, one thing I recommend if you are using a Dremel often is getting an extra uh, canister of saw blades. These break very easily, tend to go through them pretty quickly. Um, as you see, I have multiple canisters of these hanging around here. And uh, we go through them pretty regularly. Maybe painting's your thing, customizing. When I make a General Lee or some Bandit cars, you're going to need a lot, of, uh, a lot of things to do the job right and to also keep yourself safe. Uh, first thing is respiratory, uh, a mask. Uh, I have a, a face mask here, a breather, with uh, lead filters in it. Um, I just buy the lead filters because they seem to be work for paint and everything else that I use it for. If I'm spraying something in the yard also or working on the cars, I know that the, the lead filters pretty much got me covered on every use I'm going to need it for. Uh, main difference is uh, they're going to cost more. So you can spy, buy the ones for paint. It might be a little bit cheaper. But if, uh, if you ever need to do other things, you might have to change the filters to make sure that you're not breathing any chemicals in. Uh, that's why I always just buy the, the lead filtrate ones. And for the things I do, that's pretty much got me covered for everything that I have to do. Uh, masking tape. 
Uh, if you're going to be masking the slot cars, do not use the blue tape. It is not made to do this. I have videos out there where, um, and specifically this, this challenger here, where I was using the, the blue tape to mask off the yellow so I could paint the black. And when I pulled that blue tape off, all the yellow paint came off with it. Uh, one of our viewers turned me on to uh, frog tape, and I found this at Lowe's. Uh, it is not cheap. It's a very expensive tape. But you are able to put it on freshly painted surfaces and remove it, and the paint will stay on the surface. Uh, I have used this on everything since I found out about it. All the customizing here I use this on, and for the transformers as well. Uh, I cannot recommend the frog tape enough. If you need a clean, straight edge line, this will get it done. Um, sanding paper. Uh, this also goes with the mask. A lot of these resin bodies, such as the Cadillac over here, uh, you don't want to breathe any of the dust that's coming off of this when you sand this before painting it. Uh, these do need to be sanded. They need uh, a little bit of bite for the primer to, to uh, adhere to. And the dust will get in your lungs and it will stay in there. It's not what you want. But uh, to do that, uh, this sanding block is 320. I use this more for uh, getting corrosion off the tracks more than on the body. Uh, for painting the bodies, I'll use a... Uh, I got 1,000 or 2,000 grit to go over the body. Obviously brushes for painting. Acrylic paint. Uh, you can buy these at Michael's or Joanne Fabrics. Uh, they're just water-based. Uh, I use it in combination with the frog tape to mask an area off. And, you, and as you see here, I did the tail lights on the Hellcat here and the front grill. Uh, works great. Um, they also sell uh, spray paint pens. This is great. Uh, if you just want to like do wheels really quick, you can spot a wheel, or I use these to do the, the teeth on my Unicron Transformer. Or um, you can even uh, wipe a toothpick onto the tip of the, the spray paint pen here. If you have a really tiny area you want to get into, just rub a toothpick on there and then use the toothpick to, to paint really small uh, things on the cars or whatever you're painting, dioramas. Um, along with that, in the sanding, is alcohol. You're going to need this to clean after you're done sanding to wipe the surfaces clean before you paint. Uh, this is also great for cleaning the track, to getting the dirt off the track after uh, a while. Um, yeah. Uh, paints. I use, I like these, I buy these at Walmart. They are the two-in-one primer and paint in one. So uh, basically like this yellow can here, you shouldn't need to prime. You can just paint the yellow on because it has primer in it. Uh, I still like to do both, though. If I want to put a base coat down a primer, I'm either going to use a black, a white, or a gray, because that's going to affect the final color of the top coat that goes on. So if I paint with a, a primer with a white base first, it's going to brighten the yellow. If I use a black primer first, it's going to darken the yellow. Electronics, soldering, cutting, stripping wires, and all other fun things that we do with this hobby. Uh, this hobby is... Uh, part electrical te technician in itself. Uh, soldering irons. I use this one here. I got it off uh, Amazon. It looks like it's X Strong Model 3020. I'm able to, once you turn it on, you're able to set your temperature. I run it about 324, 325, and you'll see it now heat up. Uh, this is great. Uh, it came with a bunch of different tips on it. I just have the regular flat blade on it at the moment. Uh, don't be afraid to solder things. It is much better than using the different butt slices. I, I don't trust these. These are good for maybe doing a car stereo. But for what we do, if you're doing it on a controller or something else, running a power trap, you really want to solder the wires. In conjunction with the soldering iron, I also use a, a lead-free solder that I have and flux. This is a glass flux. Actually, my wife uses to do stained glass, but any electrical flux is great. The purpose of the flux it's to allow the solder to flow over the surface you're soldering. To get the flux onto the wire, I just use an old paintbrush I have here, and it looks disgusting. And really, there's so much on there, I could probably do a, a ton of wires before I actually have to add any more to it. For a lot of the things I do, I run 18-gauge wire for everything. Uh, Two-stranded pair here. It's flexible. Uh, it's easy to use. It's a good gauge for the amount of voltage we're running. Uh, there are You should be using maybe different gauges depending on how much power you're putting down the track. But, um, you know, for the, the short time and short bursts of speed that I'm doing here, I have not had a problem with 18-gauge wire overheating or causing any problems in my applications here. 
Uh, as I mentioned earlier, there are also other options of soldering, uh, butt splices as well, or wire nuts. I don't have any down here. And these are really easy to use. You simply put a stripped wire into one end, and then with a crimping tool, which I should have grabbed, but I didn't, uh, you would pinch down, and this pinches the wire, and you see there's a metal tube in there to transfer the, the, the electrical current to the other wire that you would do on the other side. And as well, some cutters here to snip the wires. Uh, this is an over-engineered but amazing tool. This is an auto stripper. You simply put a piece of wire into the, the middle there. It bites down, and then it strips the rubber right off the, the, the wire. And there's no fiddling or fussing with a, a manual one where you got to set the right gauge of the wire and then uh, pinch the wire and pull it off. Uh, this is great. It came in a pack with... Uh, the butt splice um, tool to uh, crimp, and also with the cutter here. Uh, I highly recommend these. I don't know how I went so long without without them. <laughs> and then, of course, when you're all done with your job, you got to cover up your joints. Uh, so this is a heat shrink that I use. It comes in many different sizes. You want to make sure you got uh, the right size for the wire you, you are using. If uh, the heat shrink is too large and the wire is too small, it won't be able to shrink down far enough to actually cover the joint you made and of course trusty old black electrical tape can also be used as well to cover your joints and finally coming down to the last item on the list here uh, is a, a vice uh, anytime you need a third hand this is the tool that's going to be it uh, I use this a lot for soldering for holding the wires in place so I can work the solder and the iron together with my two hands while this holds the wires for me or anything else. It also has a great hard surface here to work on, again, for soldering right on it, or if you need something to hold in place to drill on. A lot of times I'll put a piece of wood here just on top so the drill doesn't go into the metal, but it's a nice stable place to drill on top of as well. Um, it's able to be uh, bolted into a, a, into a work table if needed and uh, it has different actuations to be able to rotate and uh, get it to where you need it. Uh, highly recommend getting that. Well, that was a lot of talking. <laughs> I hope I didn't bore you off to death. But uh, yeah, that pretty much covers all the tools I use to maintain uh, the drag strip and the slot car track over here as well. Um, if you have any questions on any of this, leave me a comment. I'll have a bunch of different links to uh, different places online where I purchase a lot of these things. Um, Again, and if, uh, please let me know if you're watching this video later on and the links aren't working, just ping me up. I can probably pretty quickly find uh, an updated link for things as well. So that's going to do it for this video. Uh, please give me a thumbs up if you enjoyed the content. Please subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. Please share it with others and keep having fun, everyone.